All right, we've almost finished the program. We saved this till the last because I didn't I didn't want to ruin our fun and get in this mood and talk about this, but everybody has tweeted us the the links to the stories it made every newspaper, every wrestling site, mainstream news. A lot of people wanted to know what we've had to say and or what we have to say. And I asked you before we did the program today, I said, should we talk about this? And you made me realize I hadn't really sat down and thought about it, but there's almost no clips of Jim Cornette on this person we're about to talk about, except when we've done retrospectives of the different territories or places that they worked and et cetera in the wrestling industry, but nothing much personally. And there's been a reason for that because I have for a long time now felt bad for been embarrassed for felt ashamed for ashamed of sad about whatever Tammy Sitch's life and the way it's turned out. And I didn't want to be out of, if nothing else, but fond memories of Chris Candido, even after Tammy's let me down. I didn't want to be the one to just put boots to somebody that's obviously a fucking train wreck and refuses to get their various shit together. Why do I need to do that? Because honestly and truthfully, I may be an anomaly in the entire professional wrestling profession, industry, everybody involved in it in any respect, that I've never had one single crossword or bad experience personally interacting with Tammy. And that, I think, makes me the only one. And I don't know whether it was even with the things that have gone on. I mean, it's not like we spent a lot of time around each other the last 10 or 15 years. But I've seen her on occasion when she would show up. But I don't know whether it was just that she she knew that she couldn't necessarily fool me because I was there at the start of all this and I know, you know, her tricks or that she was grateful to me for giving them a start or whatever. But so I've felt bad in <sighs> up until now, I didn't want to talk about her various fuck ups because it's just, it's bad, but it was bad. She was fucking her life up. It was, it was her doing about herself and you shake your head and you have fond memories of people when they were not complete fuck-ups, and if if that person has never done anything personal to you, or she's never caused any offense to me in terms of one of my trigger points, which is making a joke out of the wrestling business. She's brought bad publicity onto wrestling with her out-of-the-ring exploits, but she was never one to make a... She, you know, a, a joke out of the business itself or to go out there and do bullshit. And, you know, she saved that for a private life. So, but now I've gone from trying to support her in the 90s when she was first starting to get too big for her britches, trying to help sometimes in the 2000s a bit when she just seemed like she needed help or had troubles or whatever, but you'd ask her, are you okay? To, oh, everything's fine now. I've got my shit together. And in the next thing you hear, she's in jail again. I've gone from that to being, uh, feeling bad, from feeling embarrassed to resigned that she was never going to straighten herself up. And that was going to be one of those things, you know, and you wish good for people, but they're not going to do it for themselves and you can't do it for them if they won't do it. But I, I, I still, as much as we all thought, well, this is not going to end well, I still thought it was her that she was doing the damage to and that it would be her to 
but unfortunately suffer the consequences. But now she's killed somebody. And I've gone from feeling bad to be embarrassed to resigned to now, you know, what the fuck? This has gone too far. And Tammy, regardless of whatever bad things happen with, to you and Chris or you in the wrestling business or things that you caused you to fall back or whatever the fuck, somebody just wrote she's been arrested 17 times in the last 10 years with seven DUIs. And at some point, if you don't learn a lesson before it gets to half of those numbers, it's your responsibility. And I don't know how is the thing is now, at least over the last couple of years, she was in fucking jail. You thought, okay, at least she's not going to OD or get drunk and fall and kill herself or drive and kill herself or whatever. She's got no driver's license. She just got out of jail a few months ago for these various offenses. And she's in Florida and driving somebody else's car. She's not allowed to have a driver's license. Apparently, I would assume not allowed to have a car. So she's driving somebody else's. They're probably going to get a wonderful civil suit coming up soon. And she kills somebody. A 75-year-old man sitting at a stop sign. <clears> her <throat> stoplight or whatever. How, how would you, Brian... I'm a pretty good talker. I can talk myself out of a few things. How would I have talked myself out of that without 17 arrests on my record in the last 10 years, without seven DUIs? I'm coming down the street at what wait wait waitresses, witnesses say is a high rate of speed. I blow through the stop apparatus and crash into a motionless stopped car, killing the person that's in it. And fucking myself up, too, so she got taken to the hospital. And then, apparently, from every news story that I've heard about this or read, after she got out of the hospital, they let her go. They said they took a toxicology, they took blood tests for toxicology, and they requested the results be expedited to see whether criminal charges might should be filed. And I'm putting myself in that play. I've done the exact same thing. I tell the cop, oh, shit. I didn't see the guy sitting there motionless. I was going too fast. I'm going to go home now. Let me know if you need me. How the fuck do you get away with that? So, <clears throat> there was an article on PWInsider.com by Mike Johnson, and I suggest everybody read it. Uh, it was pr probably this past Monday or Tuesday, whenever this news came out. Apparently, everybody was too busy with WrestleMania because it happened the weekend before WrestleMania. But a WWE Hall of Famer goes to jail in Florida, and the news doesn't come out for 10 days. <clears throat> but Mike Johnson wrote that article, and when I read it, I said, I wish I'd have written it. It's how I feel. It's more articulate than I could be about the subject. He sat down and thought about it. I'm doing this off the top of my head. But it's been sad when it was just her. And you feel bad, but what, what are you going to do? And it's somebody else's life. But now it's somebody else's life. And I never wanted to put the boots to the girl because it's sad. But this is, this is too much and too far. And if she can't get her shit together, and somebody tweeted the picture, said she was driving a Mercedes. I've had a valid driver's license for 45 years. I don't drive a Mercedes, but she's driving a Mercedes that apparently she's got some jacked up meathead boyfriend again down there. That's uh, maybe it was, they said it was his car because he drives a Mercedes. If he's letting her fucking out and about, then he's as fucking guilty as she is. But at some point now, since we're aware and obvious that she's not going to do anything to stop herself, somebody needs to do it for her. And, and I hate to have to say that. And I've said in the Smoky Mountain retrospectives and some of the WWE, WWF stories, 
I felt I felt bad for quite some time because I knew who she was when she started out. She's always been a bitch. We talked about that. She always gets heat with people, but she was talented and straight. She worked for me for two years. She didn't drink beer. She never took a pill. She was never late. She was never unprofessional, never argued about a finish, never questioned a promo. I watched her get knocked off the ring in Morristown. Unbeknownst to her that it was coming, she got crossed up because she was green then, got knocked off the apron head first to the concrete, broke her finger. It was fucking sickening to look at it bent back like that. She runs in, gets one of the boys to crank it back for her and runs out for the finish. Never complained about a check. Nothing. We go to the WWF, and that's where the problem started because in hindsight and probably trying to do a little psychological work, she always had a high opinion of herself, and when it was validated by her becoming a big star, that was the beginning of trouble. And then besides pulling the shit she pulled on Chris and trying to associate with all the main eventers, she's a big celebrity, she's the most downloaded woman on the internet back when that was a new thing. She's making a lot of money. And as I've said before, I think the problem with Chris and substances was pain and injuries. The problem with her was just, oh, I'm hanging around with a bunch of people that do it and it'd probably be cool, I'll do it too. And she didn't need to be doing it. But even then, I've told you, Brian, nobody wanted to deal with her. And, and when they took her off the program, per se, as a manager and made her just a personality, the deal she had with the WWF was that they would put her on the road doing these personal appearances and on-sale dates and various publicity as this star attraction in the WWE, even though she didn't really have a, she wasn't a wrestler, nor was she managing anyone. She was just sunny, right? And so they gave her a deal where they would pay her, her contract money, plus that since she's traveling all over doing these appearances, they would pay for her road expenses, food and hotel and transportation. And they nominated me after a while, to be the one in charge of her, Jim Ross didn't want to deal with her. Bruce Pritchard didn't want to deal with her because she was snotty and snide and bitchy to all of them and et cetera, and she didn't do that to me for whatever reason. And I also, you know, it was the deal where she was turning in $80 breakfast at the Marriott 25 years ago because it was at 11, an omelet with 11 egg whites and no egg yellows and all this. She's feeding Chris. Chris is with her. And they're trying to heal it in on the office. And all I do is call and say, Tammy, start eating the egg yellows or tell Chris to bring a fucking sandwich. I'm turning in half of this. Okay. Nobody else could deal with her, but I never had a problem, but everybody else did. And now and then she became her own problems. And then she lost her complete ever-loving fucking mind. So I can't defend it. I don't take any pleasure in saying it, but somebody's got to make her accountable for herself because she's not going to do it. And now at this point, maybe it's saving her life, but a little too late for the guy she just ran over. So for the people who think that I'll always find something rosy to talk about when it's my friends and people that I've have never done anything bad to me and that I don't have any issue with, I can't excuse this. And so for everybody who was asking, what do you think? It's sad and it's embarrassing, but ultimately all this is her fault. And you can't say it any other way. I... I I assume she's going to be in jail at some point for the rest of her life. Can't say that for sure. If some evidence does come through, oh God, the brakes failed. Well, then I'll be the first one to say, well, thank goodness. You're a fuck up, but you didn't fuck up that much. But do we really think that 
news is going to come out. The seven DUI number is the one that I knew she had several, but I didn't realize it was that many. And as bad as it is that she keeps getting them, it's even worse that she's allowed to. That after, after four, after three, after a couple <laughs> times where you show that even well, if they suspend your license, you shouldn't drink and drive, you keep doing it. How about when you get arrested for anything four times in the same day? Wasn't that her, her record when she was going after the other old boyfriend and trying to climb in the apartment building or whatever? Is three if it wasn't four. Boy, is something about that. She have said, hey, maybe I need to modify my behavior. So anyway, um, check out the article on PW Insider. Mike Johnson wrote it. I agree with it. And it, he didn't take any pleasure in writing it either. But a lot of us have known her since she was a teenager. And you would have never thought that that person would end up this way. But unfortunately, it's happened. And there's no excuse for it. And I, and I don't even really know how to get out of this bit. Well, I'll tell you what, to get out of this, I'll hit you with some other news before we wrap things up. Breaking news, Jim. It has just been announced by the Academy Board of Governors that Will Smith is banned from the Oscars and all Academy events for 10 years. Oh! They've cracked the hammer down. You know, the, the only other way they could have got even more even with him was if they made him come to every Oscar for the next 10 years. What's he going to do without getting those screener DVDs? Well, he's, he's going to have to get something bootleg out of the trunk of somebody's car, I guess, if he wants to watch the major motion pictures from now on. So with that, I hope he's suitably chastened. Poor old Will Smith now. Can't go to the Oscars. I don't I don't know if I could go on if they barred me from the Oscars. <laughs>